The Energy Subcommittee will come to order for the Energy Subcommittee markup. I want to thank you all for being here today. I'm excited to chair our first Energy Subcommittee markup, take up a set of bills to increase American energy production and restore energy leadership. I recognize myself for our opening statement. The United States became the global leader in energy production and energy-related greenhouse gas emission reductions. This success was a result of federal policies that encourage innovation and investment in the energy industry, policies that unleashed American energy. Unfortunately, the rush to green agenda and misguided government policies of the last couple of years have taken an aggressive top-down regulatory approach that has decreased domestic energy production, reduced energy supplies, and increased the cost for consumers. Energy is the foundation of everything in American life. High energy prices hurt low-income and middle-class Americans the most. According to the EIA, one-third of American households struggle to pay their energy bills. We went from being energy dominant on the world stage to a self-inflicted energy crisis. We're facing energy scarcity, record high gas prices, and less reliable grid. Republicans have solutions to make us yet again energy dominant, and I'm grateful that we have an opportunity today to take up our first set of bills seeking to achieve this goal. I also want to note that these bills went entirely through regular order. We had a full committee hearing in January to inform us on the state of American energy, as well as a field hearing in Midland, Texas. Subcommittee also held a legislative hearing the first week of February to hear expert testimony on how to better the bills, and we're now holding the subcommittee markup. All the bills today seek to unleash American energy, make energy more affordable for all Americans, and secure energy supply chains. My bill, H.R. 1121, protects American energy production by prohibiting the president from declaring a moratorium on fracking. It also reaffirms the states have primacy over production on state and private lands. This is necessary because President Biden has repeatedly stated that he would end fossil fuel production in the United States. To address energy infrastructure permitting, we have Mr. Armstrong's bill, H.R. 1058, promoting Cross-Border Energy Infrastructure Act which encourages the construction of energy infrastructure across the borders of the U.S., Canada, and Mexico, helping us secure Western Hemispheric energy security. There's also Dr. Burgess's legislation aimed at streamlining the natural gas pipeline permitting process at FERC. Increasing pipeline capacity in the United States is key to our energy security. Several bills also address the importance of American energy exports in the global market. The world is safer when America is energy dominant, and Representative Johnson's bill to unlock our domestic LNG would make it easier for FERC to approve export terminals to deliver clean energy to our allies. We also will be taking up a resolution from Representative Guthrie that expresses support for free trade and the export of crude oil and petroleum products. This is necessary because President Biden and Democrats on this committee have advocated for reinstating the crude oil export ban. Lifting the export ban in 2015 has lowered prices while also increasing our leverage globally. It would be short-sighted to reverse this. Dr. Bouchon's bill, H.R. 1068, Securing America's Critical Minerals Supply Act, requires Secretary of Energy to assess our critical energy resource supply chain to ensure we have a secure and available supply. Mr. Latta's bill, H.R. 1085, the Refiner Act, requires the National Petroleum Council to submit a report on our refining capacity. It is essential we address not only expanded production, but also refining capacity to meet the growing demand. We all know President Biden revoked the permit for Keystone XL permit, pipeline permit, on his first day in office. This began as war on American energy. Mrs. Lesko has a resolution expressing disapproval of President Biden's revocation of the permit. In addition to these bills, I'm hopeful we can continue to work across the aisle to secure our nuclear supply chain and strengthen our grid, including the bipartisan cybersecurity bill from Representatives Wahlberg and Schreier. Our goal is to enact policy that delivers affordable, reliable, and clean energy to all Americans, a goal I believe that we all share on this committee regardless of our party. These bills are a step to increase supply and infrastructure, reducing prices so Americans aren't forced to decide between putting food on the table or keeping the lights on. They also get us back to being a global energy leader so we no longer have to beg our adversaries for energy. It's time to increase American energy production, restore American energy leadership, flip the switch on American energy. I urge all my colleagues to support the bills in front of us today so that we can achieve this goal. And I'll now recognize the ranking member, DeGette, for opening statement. Thank you, 